And we're live. All right. Hopefully, uh, just give, just make sure that the sound is working, or we need to make sure that the sound's working. So just give us a test. We just completely destroyed our last uh, live stream, and these are technical difficulties. This happens. Our first, the first two were were totally fine, and then we just reset it. So just make sure, just right away, just give us a yes if if things are coming in clear. Cooper, just give us a Cooper, our producer over there. Maybe not for long. Oh yeah, I know you're done, Cooper. It's <laughs> over. <laughs> this is this is like high stakes going live. It's crazy. Um, any any, we're good. Sounded good. Now it's fine. Okay, we're good. You know, hopefully we didn't lose too many of you, and you found your way over to this stream. Um, it's Friday. It's two p.m. Eastern. We're live every week, and at least we try to be. <laughs> well, we, that that didn't uh, that didn't take us down. We're still here, which is great. Um, really, the goal of this show, this live cooking show, is to just send you into the weekend feeling good about home cooking. So make sure you're coming in with your questions. Cooper is taking all your questions. Anything that uh, comes up, this is a conversation. This is live. This isn't you know me sitting back here like my other videos, editing, taking out things I don't like. We're cooking and anything could happen. You could potentially influence this, uh, this meal that I'm making today. Um, and just before we get started, I wanted to cover just a few things. Number one, we've got a very exciting little promotion later on in the video. Um, if you stick around and anything else? Oh yeah. Thanks for all the members for signing up. That has been awesome to see you coming in. Any, uh, if anyone wants to join um, Pro Home Cooks membership and get that badge, then you can do that right on this channel. And I think that's it. So today we are covering your biggest food challenges. What I did was I sent out a little uh, questionnaire, not a questionnaire, I asked on Instagram, um, just what your current cooking challenges are. And um, I wanted videos, so I got a few video responses, and I thought one was just very relevant to what I've been thinking about a lot with the content recently, and just generally how I'm feeling at the end of the week, which is using up leftovers, using up leftover food, leftover ingredients. That's really what we're gonna be covering today. Um, so Caitlin, she chimed in, Cooper. If you want to bring up that video, we're Here just she gonna comes. yeah, we're just gonna listen to Caitlin uh, and her current food challenge. Give it to us. Give it. Give My it. My question us. is for leftovers. What is your favorite thing to do with them? Uh, we typically don't have any issue eating said leftovers. The problem is, is that we get tired of eating them the same way. And I have a hard time coming up with new exciting ways to use the leftovers that are palatable to just people in general. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Love your content. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, so, and thank you for everyone who submitted questions. We're gonna just continue to do more of these, um, uh, you know, submitted questions through my Instagram, Life by Mike G. Um, so basically, leftovers. That's what we are talking about today. And there's kind of two sides to leftovers. You have, you know, actual leftovers. Say you have takeout and you have a bunch of leftovers or you made a meal and you have some leftovers specific to that meal or you have leftover ingredients. Now for me, most of the time with my cooking, I'm dealing with leftover ingredients because if I make a dish and I'm like meal prepping, I make a big pasta and I have leftover pasta, I'm just going to eat that for the most part. I get takeout here and there, and I do, actually when I get takeout, I am thinking about, okay, takeout's expensive, you know, there's delivery costs. I am thinking about how I can ultimately use some of the elements to make other dishes. But for the most part, the leftovers that I'm dealing with are just leftover random ingredients, say at the end of the week, if you went shopping at the beginning of the week, which is exactly the position I'm in right now. I just have a bunch of things in my fridge that we're gonna rummage through. I have no idea what I'm gonna make. 
that's a lie. I, I have a slight idea because I've seen the leftovers, but you know how this is going to come together is really what we're going to be discussing today. Um, so I'm going to take you over the fridge and show you what I have. And then we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, how, how we go about this. So are we good on the GoPro? Yes, we are. Awesome. We are fantastic. Sound is good, Cooper. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, we got a, a super chat already. Oh, awesome. Our okay. favorite, Sean's Gardening World. Yes, Sean. The internet just couldn't cope with such beautiful faces yeah. and they tried to silence us. Oh, thank you, Sean. You know, it's th these things happen, but um, I'm glad to see you back in the chat ready to go. So what we have right here is... A fridge. <laughs> Look at this. This is a, a little beef uh, short rib that I'm going to be smoking this weekend. My parents are coming up. That is exciting right there. Uh, but right here is a section. I did a video this week, actually. It's really interesting video kind of comparing meal kit delivery boxes to home delivery. And these are extra ingredients that I have. Um, so, you know, I have some other random things that maybe I'll call on, but this is what I'm going to be focusing on right here. We've got some carrots, we've got some, uh, scallions some tomato paste. I'm using one hand. So this is a uh, chicken broth, lemon. I'll come back for that. Pop these here. Now there are two aspects to to cooking with leftovers that I think are the most important thing. Um, I'll just get this preheating, why not? So what I'm gonna do is get out a little bit of a, a little bit of a pot. Two major elements to weigh. I think that are the most important things when you're thinking about how to cook with leftovers. Because for me, the most important skill in the kitchen is just using up what you have. I really feel that way. Like if you, I've, I've said this before, the ultimate pro home cooking graduation would be doing exactly what I'm doing right now. How can you go in the fridge and just unload ingredients and make something out of them? Because that is the only way we're going to really reduce waste, which is great for, you know, the world. And just in general, like I feel great when I'm, when I'm not letting food go to waste. And I think a lot of people do have that issue at home. And then also, um, you're going to save a lot of money. <laughs> That's where the money saving really comes in is your ability to use up these things that could potentially go bad. And then you just have to buy fresh ingredients again. And you're, you're potentially wasting a lot of, uh, money, you know, food is money and we want to use it all up. So the two main skills are the actual skills, which are, using, uh, you know, techniques that you've learned from, from, uh, just in general cooking skills. Like, of course, you know, I'm not going to sit here and just say it's anyone can do this. Like I have learned skills over the years that have gotten me to the point where I feel confident there. So that is one thing is building up techniques and skills that you've had over time. But what I think is even more important is just your mindset. Just opening up your mindset, just eliminating anything that you, just eliminating the idea of, of things being perfect, of failure, that's going to be key. Because at this point, there are no recipes. We have to get creative and to do that, we have to just open ourselves up a little bit to potentially making something that's not going to be perfect, that's you know, might be a failure in someone's eyes, but that is the key. So it's really, you know, techniques and skills. No, techniques and mindset. So that's what we are talking about today. Any, uh, yeah, we got another super chat. Okay. Prelude of me. Don't forget to give Cooper a plate today. Need to get his rating of the dish. Okay. You're right. You're just, <laughs> wow. I've been, I've been holding off on Cooper. I'm withering so, away over here. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, that's going to be a new, uh, a new tradition. So basically, I've got some scallions um, that I'm going to cut up as just the base, scallions and carrots. I'm going to be making a couscous because that's what I had. I've got half of 
this bag left of just like this quick cooking pearl couscous. And I figured I would use that up with some chicken stock as just the base of my meal. And we're going to kind of go from there. We got a uh, question on chicken stock. Yeah. Um, he was wondering if you can use the uh, like carcass from a store bought rotisserie chicken to make stock. First of all, that is a great talk about getting creative. That is a genius idea. Um, you know, there's so much. I remember I was cooking with my friend Derek, actually. We were off in the woods um, and, you know, doing some, doing some camping and doing a lot of cooking. And we roasted some fish. We cooked some fish over a fire. And we had all of the, the bones of the fish. And, you know, for me, I'm like, oh, okay, you've, you've eaten the fish, um, the bones are, you know, compost them, throw them out, whatever you're going to do. But no, Derek took the roasted fish bones at this point, because that's all we had, and he made an entire stock with them, just like a roasted fish bone stock. And it was so good. And a lot of times I'm just roasting bones. I just made an entire roasted uh, roasted bone stock today out of pork bones. So yes, you can totally do that. A lot of people think it's once it's roasted, it's done, but there's still a lot of flavor there and, um, you can totally do that. So what I'm going to do here, I'm actually, I just have a little bit of oil in the, the pan. I'm also going to chop up one of these carrots and these are just our base aromatics. So that's again, getting rid of leftovers, like, what can you use? In this case, you know, what aromatics do I have? Carrot and green onion. That's not generally going to be on, I don't know if I've ever seen those aromatics together on a recipe. Just carrot and green onion. I'll probably throw some garlic in there as well. But that's what we have. And that's what we're going to use. And why not? Prelude Just, of me with another super chat. Okay. Uh, another great idea is to throw the veggie trimmings in the trash, but put a Ziploc bag and freeze them mm. until you have enough to make veggie stock. Yes. Great, great idea. You know, honestly, since I started composting, since I, you know, moved into this place and now I've got a garden, I've got serious compost, everything's just kind of going into the compost. So I... You know, I've got two kids too. So just like, what is the easiest thing I can do to not waste ingredients? Um, but that is an amazing idea. I have been there in my life where I've done that and um, just saved up veggie scraps, anything to create flavor and also save money in this case. So I'm just going in with, uh, probably going with one full carrot and we're just going to cook that down and really get it nice and caramelized and just build a little layer of flavor with our couscous. I got a question here about they saw um, Melissa saw your Greek yogurt in the fridge and she has trouble uh, using it all. Did you see Greek yogurt in the fridge? Let's let's take a little look because now Yes, you did. And we are 100% going to use that. That's funny. I was going to use the sour cream. You know what? I'll probably use both of those. So let's get that. Let's get a few other things. We've got this Parmesan. I think I've got an idea for that. And then this lemon. And then we're going to do over here, we're going to get the, the garlic. Mm. Okay. Boom. So... I do want to get a clove of garlic. If you, that's, a, that's an ingredient. Was it Melissa? I yes. Missed, um, Melissa. Yeah, just any suggestions? So yogurt, anything, um, you know, milk based like that, uh, sour cream, even mayo, that's not milk based, but, um, you know, having these creamy elements on hand are always just a wonderful thing to have in your fridge because I went over this in my, shopping video that I put out a few months ago. I think 10 biggest mistakes people make when shopping. You know, you get yogurt and you think about yogurt as something that you eat. You know, you're just gonna uh, 
<laughs> put some fruit over it. But yogurt is so much more. It's such an amazing ingredient for sauces, for baked goods. And I'm, I'll make a sauce for what we're going to do here. And I'll take you through that. Something I wasn't even thinking about. Thank you very much. So we're just slowly cooking this down. We don't need like a ton of heat, just a medium heat. I'll give it a little salt as well, just to kind of break it down a little quicker, remove some of that moisture. And we've got a base that might not look, uh, you know, super traditional, green onion. We're, and we're, you know, we really focused on the white ends of these green onions because that's going to play more like an onion. This, the green is going to be more of a garnish. It's going to break down a lot quicker, which we can garnish the, the uh, end dish with. But if you just cut off the actual white ends, that's going to be very similar to a regular onion. And it's going to be able to hold up a little bit more like this. We got a uh, specific leftover question Cut. here. Valerie has leftover mashed potatoes and she wants to make a cottage pie. She doesn't have tomato paste and she wants to caramelize mushrooms and onions. Do you have any thoughts on flavor pairing? Yeah, just leave that question up uh, on the screen so people can see. Oh, it went it's away. On a, it's there on we a go. Timer. Um, leftover mashed potatoes and wants to make a cottage pie. Don't have tomato paste. And want to caramelize. This is this is serious. Mushrooms and onions. I'm not exactly sure what the issue is there. You don't have tomato paste, which is funny. That's another reminder because I have, I think I had some tomato paste somewhere for this dish. Where are you? I'm almost positive. Did I take? There it is. Tomato paste. I have tomato paste. Way ahead of yourself. So I'm the lucky one here. This was left over from this video. Actually, you know what? You know, it's like things, we got off to a terrible start with one live stream down, but now all of your questions are just sparking ideas, which is fantastic. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of tomato paste right here. So maybe that's, honestly, when you make cottage pie, I didn't know tomato paste was, did you, is that like traditional? I, I mean, to be honest, I don't know exactly what cottage pie. Is. Yeah, I just thought shepherd's <laughs> pie. Shepherd's pie. I don't think of tomatoes. Yeah, so I, I can't answer your question fully because I don't understand the question. Um, but, you know, just a great example of just don't use tomato paste. We have to, when we're using leftovers, that is the mindset part. We have to break away of what we think is traditional and necessary for a dish. If you don't, and you don't just kind of go off on your own little tangent when you're cooking, then you're gonna have trouble with just kind of bringing food together in this, in this fashion. So just get rid of it. Or maybe you have uh, something else. I don't know what you have. Maybe there's something else that could replace it. Um, tomato paste is going to add a lot of umami flavor. Um, once you cook it down like this, a little bit of sweetness. So you can start thinking in that mindset, like even a little miso paste could work. It's going to be, you know, it's not going to be your traditional cottage pie, whatever that is. But hey, you know, it, it, can, it can work together, I'm sure. Honestly, anything like ultimately... This is my brother's theory that any food can pair together. And I, I do believe in that. There's a way. We're just kind of very, it, it can be very easy to get stuck in what you think is the correct way to bring together a meal. So this is like a really nice base right here. Carrot, onion, uh, garlic, tomato paste. So the next thing I'm going to do is just pop in the, uh, the old kous. And oh, we got one here, on a clarification on the cottage pie. Yeah. So shepherd's pie has lamb, cottage pie has beef. Oh, okay. So basically the Similar. same thing. Yeah. See, this is what I'm talking about, just like terminology. It's all the same thing. <laughs> lamb versus beef. Someone, you know, at, at some point in their life made a, a delicious pie with beef or lamb, and then now it has a name, and people get concerned that the name doesn't match up to the actual... Uh, meat, it's 
it's all it's all going to be all right. So I'm just going to add about a cup of couscous, and then we're going to go in with a cup of this chicken stock. We got a question here. Do you plan on making more homebrew beer videos? Oh, good question. Um, so I'm going in with a cup of the chicken stock and a cup of water. I think a two to one ratio, like it's pretty much what this package is telling me, two to one ratio. And then what I'm gonna do is jack that up a little bit, get that to a boil, anything like this, you know, ultimately bringing it up to a quick boil, any grain or rice, or whatever it is, bring it up to a boil. We can season it a little bit more. Doesn't need much because we already have some seasoning in there. And once it's on a boil, we'll take a, a lid, which I'll get right now, and we'll cap it. And that should be done in 15 minutes. And then once that's going, that's when we can start working on other elements of the meal. So home brew. Oh, man. What? Do you, you know the name of that? Uh... The question asker? Mm-hmm. I need to connect. I need to connect. I need to connect. <laughs> Do you? Oh, yep. Matthias. Matthias. Magnuson. Magnus. Last there we name, go. Magnuson. Yeah. Matthias. Matthias. Yeah. So, you know, I have basically, oh, this could lead me into a whole tangent. I'm just going to, while I talk, I'm going to get this uh, potato right here. Sweet potato. I had one left um, and I figured there's no, I'm totally out of protein for this meal, which the way I served up these ingredients before, I did make a couscous, but I had some ground pork and I made a really nice spiced pork. Um, so I was thinking like, oh man, I'm out of protein, but that's all right. What else can I use? And we're going to go vegetarian tonight, but I kind of have a little bit of a uh, a hack to to potentially get around the uh, the protein issue to add a little bit of um, wouldn't call it protein but a little bit of extra flavor. So I'm just gonna peel this up and I'll answer I'll answer your question, Mateus or, or whoever whoever you were. Uh, so basically, when I when I moved into my studio in Brooklyn. Um, that was about three years ago and I was very, very, very excited because of all of the fermentation potential and I got off to a hot start just fermenting everything. As you saw, there was a lot of fermentation content on the channel at that time and, um, Beer was one of those things I always wanted to do. Beer is like, it's not the easiest fermentation project. It takes a good bit of equipment and um, it takes time, you know, to brew beer from start to finish is at least, is this thing going? Oh, there we go. We are out of fuel on this. That happens. I believe we should have another one in here. Thought I like. Didn't hear anything. Oh, you know what, Cooper? Why don't you run down because yeah. we're almost run down to the the basement in the fermentation room. There's a whole package of these, okay. and just grab one, and I'll just keep chatting. Um, so, beer was something that always kind of like I don't know scared me a bit just because of the amount of equipment compared to say kombucha. Kombucha was kind of my, my initial way to get into fermenting liquids and making carbonated drinks. And I would say for anyone out there who is trying to make a fermented drink, something that's really fun, but just a little easier, go with, uh, go with kombucha. There we go. Hooper to the rescue. Thank you, dude. Yeah. Kombucha is just, you know, if you have a glass jar and you have a SCOBY, you pretty much can make it and then you just fill up bottles. Whereas brewing beer, more equipment, not saying that should completely uh, throw you off, but I will, I will say that. And so I started brewing beer um, because I had the space and I had the time and it was very, very exciting. 
Um, I, you know, just started off with some basic, uh, just beginner brews. There was a place around me that, that was a beer supply store that was really actually featured them in a video I made. And, uh, you know, my first brew was pretty good. Like right out of the gate, it was pretty solid. And, um, I brewed probably in my lifetime, maybe six batches of beer. And I found that just having a batch of brewed beer, um, was homemade beer was so exciting. <laughs> it was just so nice to have around because they're like a little lower in alcohol percentage than your regular beer. So much fresher when you brew it at home, unless you're going to like a, a local brewery. And, um, it, I just loved it. Now, <laughs> moral of this story is I had two little kids and just in general, fermentation was one of those things that kind of, because it takes time, you have to, on, you have to do the thing, but then you also have to watch it and, and make sure that, you know, the, the brewing process and, or whatever you're fermenting is, is going correctly. So fermentation was just one of those things that kind of fell by the wayside, um, which is fine. And my, my, my brewing kind of went away for a bit, but I am set up here. I have all the equipment and it's, it's there. It's just a matter of timing and when that's going to come back. And then who knows, maybe that somehow slips into videos. Um, but I do have that beginner's guide to brewing beer on the channel. If you're trying to get into the game and you want to get inspired. Super chat alert. Yeah. Andrix Arcanum, love your content, Mike. Been watching since Brothers Green Eats. Glad to see the mic issues are solved. <laughs> I am too. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, then we had a couple questions yeah. on gas burners and yeah. recent studies on them. And, uh, oh, interesting. Planning, recent studies. Let's see. Here's a good one. A couple questions on this? <laughs> yeah, we had, a, we had a, at least two. Okay. About... Uh, here we go. Matt Cross. Sorry if you have to talk about this before, but do you think you'll be switching to electrical based or induction cooking due to the recent reevaluation of the health health risks of cooking with gas? Interesting. I have not heard about I mean, you hear a lot about energy costs right now. It's just energy costs just actually my last video that was interesting. I, I put out a video on um, you know, foods that can save you money. And one of them was sourdough. And there were a lot of comments talking about the energy cost of baking sourdough at home, you know, cranking up your oven to, to max, keeping it on for two hours. And those were really good points. I didn't take that into account. Um, now, one thing there is that uh, I've heard, actually, someone I work with told me that you can bake sourdough cold. You can not cold totally, but you can start it off cold so you don't have to preheat the oven. I haven't tried that yet, but I don't know anything about these studies on gas cooking potentially being harmful. This is the first time I'm hearing that. Yeah, so me if, too. Maybe uh, somebody let us know yeah, what's going on Yeah, let with us that. know in the, uh, in the chat. So I'm just going to add a little bit of oil to these potatoes. And then what I think I'm going to do is, I believe I have a spice here. You know what? Do I have some za'atar? Again, these are all just <clears throat> things that are hanging around in my pantry. And you're just rummaging through. Like I've got sweet potatoes here. Uh, I'm making this couscous. So I'm already kind of, you know, cooking a little more Middle Eastern influenced. And actually, speaking of, do I have raisins? That would be nice. No, I think I'm out of raisins. I would love to get a little like dried fruit in that couscous. That'd be amazing. But I've been using this za'atar recently because I've been cooking this week um, more Middle Eastern inspired. And this is just a spice mix I have on hand. But you can, of course, spice it up with whatever you want. But this is just a great way to get some like instant flavor on these potatoes. They look a little bit dry too. So I'm just going to hit them with a little bit more oil. And then I need some salt too, because I don't think this spice mixes any, any salt in it. There we go. Salt, salt, salt. So I'm seeing a few people talking about this okay. gas thing and it's, it's seeming kind of inconclusive, more research needed. It's 
kind of a new thing being okay. demonized without good reason. Yeah. I saw somebody mentioned it potentially could cause asthma in kids, but it's not really ah, interesting. Proven. Just from kind of the gas. I mean, I know I actually did a whole video on choosing. This was an interesting uh, concept. Choosing the the proper, um, you know range for your needs because I've worked with gas, I've worked with induction, and I've worked with electric. So if you have any questions on that in general, feel free to chime in on the chat. Um, I will say that gas is by far the most fun to cook with. That's why, and I think it's the easiest to cook with because you can see it. Um, but you are, from my studies, you're losing, or research, you're losing a lot of energy um, because it's just kind of shooting out <laughs> into the environment, whereas, say, an induction burner is just direct contact. It's like 90% efficient. This is like 40 or 50% efficient, something like that. But just, you know, you can't be cooking with fire. So what I'm going to do is we've got our sweet potatoes here, and they are looking beautiful. I'm going to take them over to the air fryer because that is just the easiest way to roast veggies. We'll plug in Mr. Air Fryer. This is my Kosori. Where are you? Take that out. This is my Kosori light. You can find this on prohomecooks.com. Uh, this thing is incredible. And even though it's small, uh, it could still handle, you know, like that's pretty crowded in there but that's fine, it can still handle a good load. It might not be the perfect roast, but you know, do you think I care? So we'll crank that up to, let's do 400, and we'll start with 10 minutes. And uh, no, we can definitely do like 13 minutes. Take this back over here. And you know, this is an excellent time to tell you about the offer that we have for you today, which has to deal with this knife right here, which has been just such a fun knife to use. This is a Kyocera knife. So this is actually a ceramic blade. Uh, ceramic is not gonna be the same as your general steel, uh, stainless steel blade, or, you know, potentially, um, carbon steel right here. These are metals, carbon steel, stainless steel. Um, this is actually ceramic right here. Um, and Kyocera is a knife brand that I've been using for many, many years, just because I'm always interested in trying new things. You know, I cook so much food. <laughs> you saw my video when I was cooking every single meal for the week. That's a lot of time in the kitchen and a lot of time is just prepping and cutting things. And you wanna be inspired, you wanna be as comfortable as possible. And not that you need a bunch of knives, but I will say, you know, you don't just have to have one chef knife. I like having a few different options. I will say, rather than getting an entire um, knife block where you're, you're not gonna be using half of those knives, you're gonna be much better off investing your money into say two different types of chef knives because that's what you're gonna be using 90% of the time. This right here is the Kyocera uh, Japanese Santoku style knife and it's so all purpose. And Kyocera, they don't, they're not trying to compete with your metal knife. Again, that's not what it's about. This is a totally different thing. Um, it's a ceramic blade, which is great because ceramic is extremely hard and um, it will last for a really long time. So if you're not huge into sharpening, getting a ceramic blade is gonna, it's gonna last so much longer until it starts dulling out. You can sharpen it with a, you know, a actual ceramic home sharpener, which they sell, or you can send it in to get, um, to get it sharpened, but it's just gonna last a much longer time until you have to do that. And one thing that's fantastic about it is that, it can, do I have anything to cut? It's just so light um, because 
the, the ceramic material is going to be lighter than the metal. So this thing right here, I mean, this is a, a knife by Mizan. Love it. All purpose. A little bit bigger. I believe this is the eight inch, um, maybe the seven inch. I'm not exactly sure. I think this is a six inch. No, it looks like eight to six inches there. Um, and this thing is just like makes me want to cook. It's so light um, and it just preps things so well. And that's what this is about. You also, with the ceramic knife, you don't want to be hacking through, you know, big pieces of bone or anything like that because you can chip the blade. But for just cutting through uh, veggies and uh, fruits and just your basic prep, this thing is going to absolutely crush. In general, you know, the ceramic knives that we, uh, that we offer at ProHomeCooks.com um, so basically you can head over to ProHomeCooks.com if you're interested in um, investing in one of these uh, ceramic knives. We've got a special offer. We've teamed up with Kyocera. If you use the code word SLICE at checkout and you add, if you, I guess you can't stroll up, but if you saw that. Um, there it is. There's the, uh, there's the, the code SLICE. If you add that little green pairing knife that shows up at the top of the screen, the first 20 people who use the code word SLICE get a free green pairing knife, which is great. That's like a $40 value right there for free. And that works for any Kyocera knife product. So there's a whole range of uh, different price points, different styles, and they're all awesome. I've used a lot of different you see that green one right there that is the um that's the the free little gift for the first 20 people who use the code word slice but these are all great i've had a good variety of these over the years and they've always just been a ton of fun and yeah currently i am just obsessed with this knife let's see where we're at whoa we are cruising on that so that's for the first 20 people that use code word slice see this is instant couscous right here so it is already done and a little burnt on the bottom, but that is, I wouldn't say burnt, just, yeah, not burnt, which is great. We're like a second away from being burnt. It's just a little stuck, which is totally, totally fine. But this looks absolutely perfect. I think the, the, the addition of that tomato paste, just giving it that red color and let's see flavor wise. Mm. Wow. Wait a moment. Uh, that is so good. Like I could add a little bit of salt, but you got to be thinking about what else is involved in the final plating. Are there other salty elements? Like everything doesn't need to be salted, you know, to the max. And this is like a little, I'm gonna turn that off. This is a little undersalted. It's not heavily seasoned, but there are actually, yes, there are other things like a sauce that I'll add that will pair perfectly and balance out those salt levels. So just keep that in mind. That's something you kind of learn from just cooking a lot. So this is, uh, this is fantastic. And another thing to keep in mind that really just comes with time is this right now is a little tiny bit chewy and I could keep cooking that right now because I'm concerned that it's chewy. But if you just put the lid on like this, there's going to be a lot of residual heat. All of that steam still in there. That's going to keep cooking your food. So generally your food is always like if you're making a pasta, it's going to always just keep cooking a little bit longer. And those are the things that's why it's so hard to be a restaurant chef to try to produce food that's perfect for all of these people. It's insane. Because even just for me, I'm getting it wrong all the time, or the texture is not what I want. But these are the things that you kind of learn by just cooking of like, okay, it's a little chewy right now. But I guarantee in 10, 15 minutes when I'm serving this and I just leave this here like that, it's going to be perfect. We've got yeah. two Super Chats. Okay. Casey Johnson with Thank the Super you. Chat. Mike, my local Indian restaurant has super chewy naan. When I try it, it's just not the stain. Store naan sucks. <laughs> I need a Pro Home Cooks approved chewy naan. Yeah. 
Okay, well, I agree with you. Store-bought flatbread generally is gonna suck. Um, that's something that I used to buy all the time, but at this point, it's like, I, you know, it's just one of those things. When you've made homemade bread, um, you're, you're gonna start avoiding the store-bought stuff. Again, you know, if that's, if that's the option that you have, if you want a quick option, buy a pack. You can, they're, they're super versatile. But what I would say to make good chewy naan is just in general is learning how to make good bread because naan and flat bread and all of these things are, they start with just a base dough. Um, so specifically, like if you want to chewy or not, you know, those are kind of in the details, but it all starts by just making a good dough. Even if you learn how to master pizza dough, it's not going to be that far off a naan. And, you know, it's going to be sometimes just the way you cook it, the way you spice it up. So just learning how to make a good base dough, you're going to have the best product, especially, you know, extending fermentation times, giving it, you know, a day or two to really ferment. All these things are going to build flavor. They're going to build the chewiness because your gluten, um, your, your gluten development is going to, is going to increase over time. So these are things that you just learn from making bread. I've got tons of videos all about just making, you know, basic flat breads or just start with a pizza dough and just cook it up like not. So we got another ch super yeah. chat. Nomi de Oro. I'm trying to get the family to eat more veggies. Any recipe or seasoning suggestions besides just roasting them? Okay. So, I mean, this meal right here is veggie based. There is no protein. Um, so, I mean, what I'm showing you right now, I think you can get some inspiration. Um, just, you know, starting to rely more, like you can get something like this. I've been using this a lot because it's just the spice mix I have. But getting a nice uh, spice mix, this is actually from Turkey. My parents brought this back for me. And um, using a little bit more spice, you know, getting into cuisines that have really good vegetarian meals like Indian cuisine, which I've, which I've shown you many times, you start learning how to treat vegetables right. <laughs> and, you know, Indian cuisine is the best example of a cuisine that just like, you know, they just know how to cook vegetables. They are, they are absolute pros because so many people eat vegetarian there. And they, that's when I started realizing, like when I started cooking Indian cuisine, that vegetables could be just as exciting as cooking meat. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is take some of this Parmesan that I have. Again, this would be an ingredient that would just sit in the fridge and maybe I'd throw it in pasta, but let's try something out. Worst thing that happens is it doesn't come out perfect. I'm gonna make little Parmesan crispies. Ooh. And I like that. You like that? I'm a big I Parmesan heard crispy fan. Oh yeah? What, uh, what have like... Usually when... like on like a salad, I would feel like. That's probably where I'd get it the most. But... Yeah, because these are generally going to be just little flavor bombs. It's just an umami flavor bomb that also is going to add texture. So in this case, I'm down protein. I don't have the reliance on, you know, a nice crispy piece of uh, chicken or something like that, that would be perfect on this couscous. But between some nice uh, roasted sweet potatoes and these Parmesan crispies, I think we can get away with something nice. But again, this is called experiment. This is the side of experimentation, like not even that much skill. I, it's not like I'm doing this all the time. I don't make Parmesan crisp Chris that often. I probably haven't in five years, six years, uh, but I know that it's possible <laughs> and that's all that matters. So now we're relying really on just experimentation and opening up our mindset. So I'm going to take a little bit of this spice mix and add that in there. And I figure that just kind of infuses because there's so much, well, this is actually genius because there's so much oil in cheese that's going to come out when you bake these down. Now that oil is going to start infusing with all of those spices, I think. And we don't even need to salt this because there's also a lot of saltiness already in your cheese or in Parmesan in this case. So I'm going to throw it in the oven. Um, the oven is now at 
350. I'm going to turn it up to 375. And things are coming along. I'm just going to check these potatoes. Oh, look at wow. that timing. Oh my wow. God. There we go. So they're still a little hard. I can tell. Um, but you can see we're roasting and that's what's nice about an air fryer. You can pack things in and just so easily shake it up. Um, and we are going to go, what were we on? I think we, you remember Cooper? 400? We were 400. I think okay. 400. Yeah. 400 and this is, you know, video game air fryer right now. <laughs> we'll go five more minutes for uh, people joining yeah. in late what are we working on right now so for anyone joining in late i have no idea <laughs> no basically the idea of today was kind of breaking outside of the box using the leftovers that we have in the fridge and for me i you know the video concept for this week was seeing if meal delivery kits i'll bring it over here we've got a little Hello Fresh, not sponsored. You want the free, the free sponsorship right yeah. now. So what I wanted to do was to see if Hello Fresh um, held up. Really, just meal delivery kits in general. I just use Hello Fresh as an example, and you know they're such a big industry. These meal kit delivery uh, uh, boxes. I think they're it's like a ten billion dollar a year industry. It's wild, and. Um, I've done Blue Apron like many years ago, and I was like, "Yeah, this is you know interesting." Obviously, I, I don't need recipes, so it's not I'm not the target audience. But they've continued to expand; they've continued to market over time. And um, HelloFresh is one that's been on my radar, so I just wanted to try it to see how compared to just ordering groceries and you know cost breakdowns and recipe breakdowns. And from that video, I had a bunch of leftover ingredients. So basically the goal of today was just to use up leftover ingredients because one of the viewers, Caitlin, I believe her name was, yep. she chimed in with just a question on how to make leftovers exciting. So we're talking all about leftovers and in this case, just leftover ingredients and really taking advantage of them. So we have couscous finished. We have sweet potatoes in the air fryer. We've got... Parmesan Chris, you know, I should set the timer on that just so I don't burn them. I, again, this is like, I don't know. I, I don't know how these are going to turn out. I don't know the timing. I don't know the temperature, but I know there's a, there's a chance. You're saying there's a chance. I know there is. And I'm just guessing 375 is always going to be, uh, safe and 10 minutes feels you know, feels like it's enough wiggle room that I'm not going to burn them. So I'll just keep checking in and seeing what happens. And hopefully we'll get a Parmesan crisp on the other side. Let me see if anything's happening. Oh, wow. Okay. And I will give you a little GoPro action. And really the last thing we're going to do is make a sauce because someone, I don't know if you remember her name, but someone chimed in earlier about the yogurt. Oh, right. Yeah. It was, uh, <laughs> Cooper, you're fired. Um, <laughs> Well, someone was asking earlier about um, how to use up yogurt, and I wasn't even going to make a sauce. It was Melissa. 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 Thank you. And again, you can influence what I'm making, which is why live is awesome. Um, so thank you, Melissa, because honestly, that's exactly what this dish needs. You know, we, the first live stream completely broke down. But now things are just tuning in great. So feeling good about that. So we've got yogurt. We've got some sour cream. I'm going to make just such a basic cream sauce. We're going to call it garlic lemony cream sauce. Like it couldn't be more basic. Having this in your arsenal is so essential because you can customize it. You can... Um, flavor it up however you want. It's going to stay in your fridge and it's going to be very all purpose. I got to remember this one. I'm work. I'm currently working. I know a lot of you have been asking about a cookbook. I'm working on a cookbook. All purpose sauces is like heavy on my, uh, my mind. Something like this when you have, you know, just a basic cream sauce, which I'll, I'll break down simply right now, you're going to be in good shape uh, because 
it can go on anything. That's what makes it all purpose. So I'm going to do a few scoops of yogurt here. Boom, boom, boom. And we can get an overhead for this because we are straight up in this bowl. Okay. Oh, Cooper. I, I lost Cooper. <laughs> what happened? I lost Cooper in the matrix. Oh, um, can we get an overhead here? Boom. Yeah. People are, are telling me my mic's off. I don't think it's off. Uh, interesting. Somebody said it's fine. I'm going okay. with who said We're it's fine. <laughs> I think they're More right. issues here. All right. Well, just keep, keep kind of chiming in um, and we'll see what happens. So I've got some yogurt. I'm going to balance that out with just the rest of this sour cream. Um, really, the ratios there don't matter so much. This is obviously much heavier on the yogurt side. The air fryer just went off. And then I'm going to do a little bit of lemon. You know what? Let's get a little lemon zest in there. Why not? My mic is on. Okay. Your Jason mic. P said he was wrong. I appreciate you owning up to that, Jason P. <laughs> Thank <fine>. you, Jason. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to just zest a little bit just to take advantage of kind of two elements of this lemon to really make it a lemony hit. I wonder if I have that. Again, this is just happening in the moment right now. I'm looking at my ingredients. I'm seeing what potentially our options here. Um, and I'm thinking right away, I'm going like more of a traditional tzatziki where you have cucumber. I don't think I, do I have cucumber? Do I have cucumber? I feel like I don't. That's all right. Um, because I can add in a little bit of this green onion, which I think will be nice. Let me check on these. Yep. We are, can we get a little GoPro? Cause we are Absolutely. Parmesan crisping. We are Parmesan crisping. I think that 375 is, uh, is nice. Look at those things. Come oh. on. Ooh. Live on TV right now. Live on the tube. Um, all right. So back to this yogurt sauce. We've got the lemon zest in there. We're going to slice up these lemons. You know, if a few seeds get in there, that's all right. It's just you eating this, right? I mean, yeah. Maybe, maybe my, maybe Cooper will uh, will not be so happy, but uh, <laughs> I'm fine with it. So we are gonna do that, and then what I'm thinking is just a little bit of garlic, like you know, a little fresh garlic will never hurt a cream sauce. And just the easiest way to infuse garlic right into here, rather than sitting and chopping it up, or even having to blend up this sauce. I'm just gonna microplane. That's just the best hack. And like a whole piece of garlic just fell in there and that's fine. Someone will be the lucky, you know, chew on a big chunk of garlic and it's gonna, they'll, they'll never know that you messed that up, which is totally fine. That is home cooking for you. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I got my garlic in there. What I'm thinking is I take now, you remember I said I used the, um, I used the white part of the green onion for the base of our couscous. Now what I'm thinking here is I use the green part for, I mean, I'm not calling it a garnish, but it's going in this sauce and it's going to do the same exact thing as just sprinkling these right on top. We got another super chat. Andrix Arcanum, your investment in chickens is paying dividends these days. Is considering it? getting my own coop. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> considering getting my <laughs> own you coop, know? but not sure the cost labor associated with that. Maybe just because you're making chicken a lot. Mm, well, I'm not killing my chicken. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will eggs? say I will say the um, the investment is actually this place, the studio came with the chickens wasn't advertised on on the actual listing but i walked back there and i'm like i'll take it are you kidding me i've, I've always dreamed about having chickens um, always wanted chickens and it's funny because my brother i just had a conversation with him on this yesterday because he's building a chicken coop right now um to me it's like when you have chick when you first you know are are getting into the chicken game it's a little scary you know just any new thing especially a live animal it's 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 nerve-wracking but um it is one of like now it's just something that i would never live without 
it 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 seems like a, a necessary thing that if you have the space and it doesn't take that much space it's just so essential especially if you're gardening this is what i've realized about chickens the obvious is getting the eggs okay which is incredible getting fresh eggs you know what you're feeding your chickens you know you can you can make them as healthy as you want feed them whatever um, and get amazing fresh eggs that are like still warm that is great but the getting the fertilizer the sort of cycle of life on a um on you know at a homestead or in a garden that is just as big of an investment and just as key in in raising chickens because they poop and you can use that to fertilize your garden that's going to be your nitrogen element that you need and when i started adding the all of that the compost from their chicken coop into the garden things just started exploding. Like my soil needed that nitrogen. So um, that's when my mindset shifted of like, oh, okay, chickens, this is the cycle of life right here. It's not just getting eggs, but you need that fertilizer. So I'm I'm actually raising chicks with my daughter this spring and I am so pumped. She loves these chickens growing up around. Like she's, I'm like, a little nervous around them because they're they're I don't know they're like little dinosaurs mm-hmm. but she's just like picking them up and like she's she loves it so um, it's looking like uh, price of eggs is way up That's oh probably why. that makes sense yes that makes a lot of sense and to be honest like in the winter right now they're not laying because um, these are a little older these these chickens that's why I'm raising new ones um, and also they just go a little more dormant with the laying in the winter. So it's not fun buying eggs. The fact that, you know, just going out there, like eggs, I would say, are the most used ingredient outside of salt and oil and that stuff. The most used ingredient for me in the kitchen. They're the most versatile ingredient because I use them in baked goods. Um, I use them in stir fries. I use them just to make eggs, you know, omelets. Um, My kids love them. So again, the payoff is huge. All right. Oh, okay. So I think, I think the timing that I chose, let's show you what's going on here with the GoPro. Sometimes you get it right. Sometimes you get it wrong. (laughs) Uh, In the end, you're, you're only learning, but right here we've got, I mean, those look, do you think those are done Cooper? Are you seeing this? It's hard to tell. Hard to tell. Because they are going to cool. I think they're a little brown. You know what? A little I'll extra keep, crispy. I'll keep them a little extra crispy. Yes. Yeah. That's that's what I'm looking for. And then we'll just finish up. I Things are coming together pretty nicely here. We'll just finish up our sauce. Um, so we're just tasting to see where we're at. Just basic, basic yogurt sauce right here. So... basic. I mean, you've got the garlic, you've got the lemon. Um, Now I'm just kind of tasting to see how I want to adjust. Number one, this is too thick. So to counter that, I think I could use just a little bit more lemon. Oh, the the other awesome thing about um, the ceramic knives is you don't have to worry about any type of rusting or or any issues there since it's a ceramic material. you know, you just, there's none of, none of those issues, which is great. Um, so it's just slicing through things perfectly. Okay. We're going to go in with a little bit more lemon. I'll probably just water this down with a little water. <laughs> oh, you know, it definitely could use some pepper. And pep, 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 pep. And I think I'll keep it pretty simple. You know, there's so much flavor. That's another thing. We were talking about balance of salting earlier of, you know, an ultimate dish. There's so much flavor that's going into this dish already from the sweet potatoes to the couscous that we don't need to overdo it. You got to be thinking holistically when you are making a dish, when you're bringing that together. So we're going to go just a little bit, just to kind of get it to the perfect kind of drizzle, creamy spot. 
And there you go. Uh, I'm forgetting your name again. I'm horrible with names. Catherine, maybe. Um, Caitlin. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's your yogurt. And that's our beeper for. We got a couple questions on the uh, sharpening of those ceramic blades. Yeah. Just can you do it the same way? Is there anything else? You yeah. Have to so consider? I mentioned. Um, okay. Now these are done. We'll just let these cool. Just give me an overhead right, right quick on that. Bang. Boom. Oh, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Excuse me, oven. <laughs> now these will, these will harden too pretty quickly. They should. Um, once that cheese cools down. And I love what's going on there. That is exciting. So with the ceramic blades, you can get um, Kyocera uh, sells knife sharpeners specifically for ceramic blades, which work great um, because this is such a hard material. It's a different type of sharpener than compared to like a whetstone. It's more of just a slide through type sharpener. You can also send them in um, to Kyocera specifically works with a, um, a company that I'll link below in the description to get these sharpened professionally. Um, but again, one of the reasons you would invest in a Kyocera knife like this is because they're just going to last much longer before you have to sharpen them because they have a, because uh, ceramic is a harder material. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're not big on sharpening. Um, and yeah, remember that code word slice is the first 20 people to uh, use there that. You have to add that green uh, paring knife if you want that green paring knife free, which I believe is a $40 knife. Um, so really, really cool offer there. Um, now, I think, I think everything comes together. I think so. So let's see. Wow, here we go. Overhead. Mm, okay, now these are perfect. I'm gonna take the offer off too. At this point, these are great. Oh, that Zatar spice is amazing. Um, let's bring this together. So what I'm gonna do is a plate. Sorry for talking with my mouth full. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm gonna take this couscous. Now let's see if my theory was right here on this being perfectly tender now that it's sat for, yeah. Just a little more tender. Still a nice chew, which is great. That means that I got um, the cooking time right and I got the, the moisture right. Look at this. Wow. Glorious. So all I can think about is my wife and I eating this and Cooper not getting a bite. <laughs> <laughs> No, we'll get it. We'll get him a portion. We'll get him a portion. Be the producer. Uh, but this is what I love about this Friday show is that, one, I get a dinner. I'm just kind of cooking with you guys, answering some questions, you know, talking food. But hopefully it does just inspire you to cook a little bit more this weekend. Um, an excellent time to cook when you have that time so then we have i'm realizing we're going orange on orange here so Ooh. maybe not the best planning there boom 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 because i use that tomato paste we've got orange on orange we've got the sweet potatoes now let's see what's happening with these things here you go Cooper. you can be you can be the one just cheesy uh, keyboard hands. Watch out for that, you know? That's what they call me, cheesy keyboard <laughs> hands. Yeah. It's nice. Mmm. Nice and chewy. I love Parmesan. Yeah. These came out great. And again, such a nice... Wow, the spice in there. That's nice. Bravo. It really... <clears throat> the beautiful thing about adding spice to these is that it just completely jacked up the spice flavor because it toasted in the Parmesan, in the oil of the Parmesan. So how do I want to serve these? I think just, hmm, I'll just rip them up. We, um, we got like another yellow thing right here. <laughs> yeah. It's orange on orange on 
orange yellow. These are like very warm. Basically, the colors of the uh, the sun right now. You know, like all of the uh, all of the colors of the sun. Okay. So then, Parmesan, Chris. I'll save a few of those, and then finally, we have our yogurt sauce. And okay, and we'll just drizzle that over. And that will be our final. This could even be a little thinner. And boom. That will be our final shebang right there. That's dinner. That was dinner. That was a spiced tomato paste couscous with roasted zatar sweet potatoes, Parmesan crisp, and a creamy lemony garlic sauce. Totally vegetarian. And, you know, you're never going to see this dish in a recipe. You probably won't see it in a restaurant because I made it up. And that was the point of today is getting creative with your leftovers, kind of breaking out of your comfort zone a little bit, not feeling like you have to be rooted in things being a certain way. It's the only way you're really going to unlock your creativity. Um, in the kitchen is just start using things up, use what you have. And just going back to Caitlin's original question, just use what you have, try things out. Don't be scared of failure and you're going to get something like in the end, you know, it's food. Like even if it, if it doesn't come out great, it's just food. You're not, you know, making a building from scratch or something like that. <laughs> it's just one meal. Um, there's, you know, the stakes are not so high. Um, I don't know, maybe in your house, the stakes are different, but, uh, that's, that's what it's all about. So I am going to serve this up. I'll give Cooper a little portion. Nice. And if there's any other questions, yeah, we'll wrap it up with the yeah. uh, final super chat. Okay. We got ND Lawhun with, uh, I'm wanting to start a garden. I like the variety and quality of yours. Do you have a yeah. full tour where you go over your routine? If not, can we get one? Yeah, a lot of people have been asking about that, a full garden tour. Um, coming soon, definitely in the spring when things are like, you know, right now I'm just kind of prepping the garden, getting it ready. Um, so in the spring when things kind of pump up a little bit more, um, I'll, I'll be ready for a full on garden tour. So stay tuned. In the meantime, my Instagram life by Mike G, that's where you're getting more like behind the scenes garden action. Um, so yeah, follow me there. Thanks again for tuning in, uh, every Friday at 2 PM to hang out with me and Cooper. And, um, I think that's, I think that's all she wrote. That's a wrap. See you later. All right.